Hi everyone and welcome to Panthera TV. My name is Kelly Carton and I'm the lead integrated content strategist at Panthera. Our end of year campaign, Catalyst, is inspiring cat enthusiasts of all ages to recognize and promote the inextricable link between wild cats and the environment. Today's episode will feature two catalysts for wildcat conservation, Alex and Alana Rabinowitz. If, those last name sounds, if that last name sounds familiar, that's because these two are the children of Panthera's co-founder, Alan Rabinowitz. Today, our conversation will cover Alan's legacy, the importance of wildcats, and practical steps that everyone can take to create action today for the future of wildcats tomorrow. If you have any questions for Alex and Alana, please add a comment and we will try to answer it at the end. Now, it's my pleasure to welcome Alex and Alana Rabinowitz. Hi, welcome. Hi, Hi Kelly. It's great to be here. <laughs> great to have you. So I'd um, love if you two can just introduce yourselves. Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Alana Rabinowitz and I just wanted to first start off to thank the relationship between Tom Kaplan and my dad that set the foundation for Panthera and also the Panthera team here in New York City and all over the globe for everything they do to make Panthera possible. Um, so just to start to introduce a bit about myself, currently I'm a junior at Barnard College at Columbia University and I'm studying biology on the pre-medical track and I'm also just like a little fun tip. I'm doing neuroscience research at the Columbia Medical Center. That's great. Thank you. And we're, we're so happy to have you here today. Yeah. Um, well, my name is Alex Rabinowitz. And uh, going off the line, I said, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. And I thank everybody that had a part in this. Um, I'm currently a graduate student at New York University studying the intersection uh, between law and politics. So. Great. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And so, um, yeah, you two have basically grown up with Panthera. You've been involved since its inception. Um, I'd love to hear about some of your first memories of Panthera's creation um, and being in the field uh, with your father. Yeah, so actually I was pretty young, so I wasn't able to join him much in the field when he was working, but I did remember when I was younger, he would bring me to Panthera quite often. And from what I remember, it started off quite small and it felt very homey. I knew a lot of people and they knew me because I would usually bother them at their desk as a little kid. <laughs> but um, now it's a lot bigger and and like, I see so many new faces, but I'm really glad that it's bigger because now we have so many people to help put the passion of Panthera that my dad wanted to. Yeah, so my first memories of Panthera were basically as an elementary and middle schooler, um, you know, roaming around the New York City office and sort of witnessing the immensely important work that was being done to protect wildcats. But I think even before that, ever since that I can remember, I knew that our father was out there saving wildcats. And I would say it was almost like growing up with a real life superhero as a dad. Mm. Um, as a kid, seeing our dad doing all these amazing things, it's, it was something almost like out of a movie. Um, when he would go out on his expeditions for field work, he'd be gone for long periods of time. But even as a kid, I knew he was doing things that almost nobody else could do or would do at that time. Definitely. I know he was very much a pioneer for wildcats and was uh, described as the Indiana Jones of wildcat uh, protection. And, uh, you know, Panthera wouldn't be here today without him. So we're great. Um, and I wonder if you can think of like a particular moment when you kind of started to realize um, the importance of this work and uh, the impact of what your dad was doing. Yeah, so I feel like for me, there wasn't really, for me, it was a lot of moments like that built up when we would go 
in our own backyard um, because since I wasn't able to go with him in the field because I was young, he would bring us in the backyard a lot and just let me know and instill in me to take appreciation of wildlife from afar and that wildlife thrives when they're free. So for me, mm -hmm. that really builds um, to take an appreciation of that wildlife should be out and we need to conserve wildlife. Um, yeah, that was a moment for me. Yeah, I think going off that, like for me and Alana, our father really did instill with us an appreciation of, of wildlife and nature. So it definitely has been a accumulation over time, sort of this formative understanding of what wildlife actually is and what conversation and what conservation actually means. But I think for myself, one experience that I distinctly remember is this moment uh, when I was with my dad and he showed me a haul of uh, animal parts that were confiscated mm. by a wildlife crime unit. And these were things like engraved tiger bones, uh, tiger pelts, uh, amulets made from tiger claws. I would say that was the moment I realized that the beauty and value of these animals were worth more to some people if they were dead, essentially. Um, mm. This really showed me the harsh reality that wild cat species around the world are currently grappling with and how it would take a lot of dedication to help these animals survive for the future generations. Wow. Yeah, that sounds like it really stuck with you. Um, sounds like a powerful moment. Um, and I guess, yeah, taking, um, as you know, you've learned from a young age, the importance of wildlife, but I guess taking a step back, like, why would you say wild cats in particular are so important to their habitats? Yeah, so I feel that as many of you know who are watching this, you probably know that big cats are a keystone species in our ecosystem. And without them, the whole ecosystem is knocked out of balance. And because without them, prey populations could explode over grazing and taking over the land. These could lead to intensified wildfires and also increase of diseases. And I think it's important to mention that this isn't something that's part of the past, it's happening right now. And we can take the Atlantic rainforest in Brazil as an example, um, due to its habitat loss and fragmentation, jaguar populations really greatly declined and rodents and pests like ran rapid. Um, and ru ruining the surrounding agriculture, basically. So I feel like it's really important that we need to talk about conserving big cats and more importantly mm -hmm. for the future generations so that they're able to walk on the same earth as them. I think it's important that we need to put in the work um, because what we do now will affect really millions of people and animals in the future. Yeah, that's... A really great question. Um, so as Alana said, wild cats have always been such an integral part of the ecological communities that they exist in. And I'm sure you already know this, but so many terms like umbrella species, keystone species, flagship mm -hmm. species are used to refer to these wild cats. And that's because so much of an ecosystem's biodiversity and well-being is reliant on these species' existence. By protecting and preserving wild cats, large portions of ecosystems that they are a part of can be protected simultaneously. And while I think that shows why we should be safeguarding these species from a scientific perspective, at the same time, losing these animals would not just be a tremendous loss for the health of our environment, but possibly an even greater loss for human civilization itself. Wildcats have existed on this earth with us for thousands of years, and I think there's a reason why most of them are instantly recognizable by anybody all over the world. These species have become symbols for us. They're symbols of strength, of stamina, of power. They're symbols of things we want to have as people. So in terms of the necessity of preserving these wildcats, I think that the negative ramifications 
of losing these animals would just be absolutely disastrous for both our environment and our society. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Alana, I love that you touched on the next generation. That's really what our this end of year campaign is all about. Um, showing people that uh, anyone at any age can make an impact. Um, and Alex, yeah, I love that you talked about um, umbrella indicator, flagship keystone species. Um, that's a big theme of uh, Panthera's present at, or excuse me, Panthera's presence at the recent COP conferences. And anyone at home who kind of wants to geek out more on uh, Wildcat's impact on the environment, um, we just created a landing page for that, uh, panthera.org slash cat, excuse me, panthera.org slash cop, uh, C-O-P. And um, you can learn more about what those terms mean, umbrella, indicator, flagship, keystone species, and um, really the, the huge impact that wildcats have on their habitats. And um, so, yeah, looking back, um, I'd love to hear um, what values uh, your parents instilled in you regarding wildlife and nature preservation and maybe any lessons learned or things they, they taught you when you were out in nature and potentially seeing wildlife. Yeah, so I would say both our parents instilled a really great deep appreciation and individualism for animals at a young age. And what I mean by individualism is that animals have the freedom to feel what they feel and they're not confined to social standards. No matter if you raised a tiger from a cub to a full grown adult, tigers just like any animal or any human will have its bad days. Maybe it's nail got caught in something or it has a toothache. Um, and a human cannot stop a tiger from having a bad day and they run the risk of getting injured or even possibly killed from it. I think it's something that both my mom and dad have taught me that animals have the have free will and a deep appreciation for wildlife because these values have really just instilled in me and instilled in me that it led me to really appreciate wildlife from afar and just be grateful that I'm also currently walking the same earth as these big cats and any wildlife. Um, it's a deep appreciation that really made me feel that I want to conserve big cats for generations to come. Yeah. Um, so I think going off what Alana said, I, I think no matter how much changes in our lives or throughout our lives, uh, I know I'll always still believe in the importance of conserving our wildlife and our environment. And I honestly think that's a really critical value to have because as your life goes on, your worldview becomes a bit more relative, a bit more subjective. Um, uh, myself coming from the world of politics, I know that's definitely the case in my field. And something that my father taught me was yes you can argue about or accept the relativism and subjectivity in the world but what good does that do us or the cats in the wild and before you know it we're left with a world that doesn't have wild cats because we were too busy deciding if this is something we should care about mm -hmm. definitely yeah like like both of you said the time is now to, uh, to act. Um, and yeah, we're, you know, Panther is all about sharing specific things that people can do at home to protect wild cats, uh, even if they're very far from nature. Um, and so, uh, yeah, what would you tell a young person who wants to get involved uh, with wild cat conservation? I would say find your passion and run with it. Really run with it. I think what people need to know is that you can start and do your part locally from your own home. You don't need to travel to Belize or to another country to make a difference. Um, my dad really wanted people like you guys to push for your passions in wildlife and big cats. Some people may not understand, but you do. And tell people why you're passionate. Tell people why we need to save the big cats because it's not just my dad's legacy. I feel that it's a legacy that needs to be shared and to be continued long into the future. And that really starts with you and your passions for wildlife conservation. Yeah, if a young person wanted to get involved in wildcat conservation, 
I would say they should be born into a family of wildlife biologists. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think if somebody really wanted to get involved, and um, this might sound cheesy or melodramatic, but uh, they should be changing the hearts and minds of the people around them, essentially. Uh, a lot of people are truly unaware of these issues and have no idea about the existential threats that wildcats are continually facing all over the world. I know Panthera routinely develops and puts out a lot of fantastic and uh, really insightful information on wildcats. And these are great tools for learning or even educating others about the danger that these animals are in right now. And I know um, Panthera just put out a series of Twitter threads all about how you can help these wildcats. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. And um, is, yeah, I wonder, like, um, kind of, you've definitely talked a lot about, um, you know, what you're uh, what your dad taught you and his vision. Um, but I guess, is there um, kind of a key message um, from your father that you want to uh, conv convey about his legacy? I would say that to everyone watching right now or to everyone who will see this, um, kind of what I mentioned, my dad wanted people like you, people who are passionate about jaguars and have an appreciation for wildlife to do their part in protecting wildlife. Yes, my dad was a zoologist who worked with big cats, but he was also my dad who liked watching little short yeah. videos of people saving domesticated animals on like dodo. It was these little acts of humanity that bring us and wildlife closer together. And I think it's really important that, that this is something that you can do locally and something that my dad would be happy seeing today. Yeah. Um, I think a key message about our father's legacy that I think should be conveyed is was his affirmation that humans need to be part of the equation in wildlife conservation. Um, while I think a lot of people, myself included, would prefer to sequester uh, large portions of uh, land for wildcats and just keep all people out of there, that idea is simply not sustainable. Um, a huge part of our father's work was finding a way for human communities to coexist with wildcat populations. These species need to be part of the identity within the community itself if we want to save them from extinction. Our father believed that the existence of these species needed to be so intertwined to the identity of a community that they were mm -hmm. indispensable to each other. Um, a really good example that my father uh, would always use was the idea of New York City and Central Park, uh, rents are sky high, housing inventory is low. It would make sense to build anything anywhere. But I don't think any New Yorker would sacrifice Central Park for more buildings because Central Park is mm -hmm. something that makes New York what it is. And this has to happen with wild cats and the communities that exist alongside them. If we want to sustain a world with wild cats for the people that come after us. Our father fought for most of his life to protect these species for future generations. And now I think it's up to us, to all of us, to continue the fight to protect them. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's it's really incredible to watch how much Panthera has grown, you know, from its initial focus on big cats to now uh, focusing on 40 species of wild cats, including small cats as well. And I hope he'd be proud of where the organization is. Um, and yeah, just I want to let everyone know if you have questions for Alex and Alana, um, please pop them in the chat and we will try to answer them. And um, yeah, I wonder, I guess, anything else that you want to share with young people who want to catalyze change in their own communities? Maybe they think like, I'm young, there's not a lot I can do. What would you say to that to that young person? I would say that 
Like I said before, start locally. You know, you can volunteer at your local animal hospital or even just if you see, you know, a stray dog, you know, save it or send it to a local sanctuary. Like I think that I think a lot of people have this idea in mind that they need to do something big in order to um, in order to make a big impact. But really, it starts small and small impacts really do make a big difference. I think for me, if I can just talk about this little like story for me, when I feel like I feel like I was when I was young, you know, I couldn't see him in action during his work, but I really felt a sense of connection and my dad doing his work in the field after he passed when we visited Belize in the Coxcomb Basin. And for me, this was actually the first time I ever saw my dad's hard work in real time and not only the effects of it, but I think something that you can do that you can, you will see the effects of it. If you do, if you start locally, you will see the effects of it. And I think I just want to send that message, start small and it'll make a big difference. Yeah, I mean, exactly what Alana said. If I think if people want to catalyze change, it really starts from the ground up whether that be using the tools and resources that Panthera puts out there or even creating an environmental club for their community. All of it really starts by getting individuals involved. I know, I know in terms of wildlife conservation, there's sometimes these notions that conservation only really happens at the high level in like uh, corporate offices or government buildings, but that's simply not true. And Quite the opposite, in fact. Uh, whilst cat species are not going to survive unless we, uh, as individuals, do something to protect them. Absolutely. Um, it's kind of cheesy, but I like to say we need all paws on deck to, to save wild <laughs> cats. Um, like, it really takes all of us. Um, and yeah, no, no matter how small, it all adds up, all of our collective action. Um, yeah, I want to thank our... Yeah, definitely. Um, we're getting, uh, yeah, really appreciate everyone in the audience. We have uh, someone from San Diego tuning in. Uh, that's my hometown. Thank you for for watching. And um, yeah, really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, we do have a question uh, from the audience. Um, what would you recommend uh, for people who want want to uh, protect the environment and fight habitat fragmentation in places that maybe is very far away from where they live. I would say that um, if you want to fight habitat fragmentation and it's far away from somewhere where you live, I would say that honestly, if you have the money, put the money towards organizations like Panthera that will fight that deforestation and like help conserve the animals and like big cats that are living in those habitats. Um, I think that if you're not able, again, if you're not able to travel, if you are able to travel to there and start, you can do work locally, I think that would be great. Um, but if you're not able to travel, you know, put your money where these organizations can help these um, places that are losing wildlife due to habitat fragmentation. Um, but if you can go, then do it locally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so much can still be done on an individual level that, you know, doesn't involve financial means or traveling. Uh, across the globe. Um, we live in an increasingly globalized society and things are more interconnected than ever. So I think if somebody wanted to, you know, really fight against and speak out against something like habitat fragmentation um, on the other side of the world, I would start with information and education. Um, use uh, your ability to sort of research and understand why this is happening, what can be done, and uh, maybe take it even a step farther and see what types of, uh, you know, afflictions are the reason for that habitat fragmentation. Is it sort of a resource extraction? Is it um, uh, 
bad agricultural practices? If so, um, maybe on an individual level, um, don't partake in those types of products um, and maybe educate the people around you about the type of uh, things that are happening over there. Because like I said before, people are truly unaware of these issues that are affecting mm -hmm. our environment and big cats. So I think, you know, changing hearts and minds, that's what we need to do. Yeah, if I could just add on, I think educating yourself, like Alex said, is really important. And within that, informing other people is also really important. You're not just, you're preventing these types of habitat fragmentation for generations to come because you informing yourself and informing other people will really cas have a cascading effect. Um, and I think that's really important to do so. Absolutely, yeah, thank you for that. Um, and uh, I know it's, you know, forever and at home, I know it's easy to get overwhelmed uh, by some of the environmental um, challenges we're facing today, but uh, our, you know, our message is focus on cats. Um, wild cats are, uh, you know, keystone indicate, uh, key, excuse me, keystone species. Um, healthy cats indicate healthy ecosystem. When we save cats, we, we save the planet. Um, and again, we have, have some real ways people can uh, can help uh, panthera.org slash cop and panthera.org slash catalyst. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, these are really great places to start and it all adds up. Um, all right, I want to um, thank both of you again for joining us. Um, thank you again so much, everyone in the audience. We really appreciate it. We hope you learned a lot. Um, and, you know, for both of you, it was really an honor to talk about your father and his legacy, uh, without which Panthera wouldn't be possible. So thank you again. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. having us. Yeah, this was a great experience. And thank you to everyone who joined the live. And thank you to the Panthera staff and Kelly and Philip who brought this together. Yes, thank you so much. Um, and uh, yeah, for everyone uh, still with us, uh, Panthera's uh, Catalyst campaign is still underway. And like we talked about today, there are so many different ways to create action today. From now until the end of the year, all donations to Panthera will be matched dollar for dollar, uh, doubling your impact. Uh, you can also share content from our toolkit, which we talked about. Um, that'll help raise awareness about the plight of wealth cats and help grow our, grow our pride. Again, that link is panthera.org slash catalyst. Uh, and on that website, you'll find shareable stories, posts, and stickers. Thank you again for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing all of you in a future episode very soon.